Okay, um, <clears throat> by way of introduction, <clears throat> I learned uh, Maral for many years. It was in Kovisa in, uh, in Beit Shemesh, and also um, uh, here in Smas for a couple of years. And I uh, actually had this to go to the cave of the Maharal in fact, and Davin and Shul, the Alpine Shul. And I feel like a kind of a Kesha that um, has been deepened over the years. And I've been quite a few this one. Um, and I was just about ready to learn Bear Goyla with uh, the Fabrice I was learning with them. We, we, we went through a few of this one. And then we kind of split, you know, went separate ways. So uh, <clears throat> it's really an opportunity to get, uh, to get started again. I'm really, uh, looking forward to looking forward to giving a shear on Bear Goyle for quite a while. Bear Goyle is kind of a unique safer. It's interesting, you know, talking about coming up to Piram. Is uh, Piram Amolik is is Gematria Sufik. So a lot of people that uh, I guess in his time and we find unfortunately in our own time as well that have a certain uh, spacus in terms of uh, the the uh, the bottom of the of the um, First of all, there's there's sometimes <coughs> uh, misunderstandings about what exactly is. Uh, what is called divisoifrim? What is called durabonen? What is called you know? Are these things to be taken less seriously than the things of Raisa? And what exactly were the Rabbanim trying to accomplish by extending things or going more deeply into things or you know uh, in terms of halachas, in terms of, of the divagadita? Um, also, there are certain certain passages in the agadita itself that is very um, elusive, or like very oblique, and it's hard to interpret. <laughs> and <clears throat> the person could either think, well, you know, either they're talking language we don't understand, or there is something, you know, that, that are, I mean, a person can have any all, all kinds of interpretations of the fact that these things are so, so uh, difficult to interpret. And the Maharal set out to, to illuminate the words of the Chachamim in a way that people can understand them and appreciate how deep they are and how symbolic and how um, uh, precise they are. They don't, they don't miss a beat. They're, they're very, very on the ball and they're, they're very exact in what they want to say and the way they, the way they wanted to say it. And uh, you just have to understand how they how they express themselves, how they, how they talk. They talk very often, very bikitsu, you know, with very very uh, with illusions to different things, and uh, very uh, brief, and you know, they elaborate, and we have to, to figure out their language to be able to understand the things that they're talking about, as, as opposed to just dismissing them. Okay, so we go to the the uh, writes in the Dhamma here. And he goes through a few ideas. Um, he lets out pretty, he gives it out pretty much in, in, in the very beginning what he's going to talk about. Okay, so what he's saying here is that, number one, a person Uda, man as a whole, as a, as a, in general, reaches his shlemus by understanding what's around him. The nimsuin, reality, you know, the, the, nimsuin, the, the reality of the whole Bria, the, great, the more he understands it, the more he appreciates Hashem himself. And he comes closer to Hashem through that. But the first thing is for him to understand himself. In other words, if he overestimates himself, then he can get into trouble by questioning what the previous Bokhan have said. He thinks, I, I know more than they did. And he uh, quickly dispels that, those illusions. Um, on the other hand, if he, if he underestimates, underestimates himself, he can think that, you know, who am I to try to figure out what they were talking about or what Hashem is talking about? You know, I'm just a little guy, I don't have a brain for this. And that's also you know, the wrong approach. So really, in general, he's always uh, promoting a derech You know, you go in the middle road and stay on track and, you know, you'll get to where you're supposed to go. But don't, uh, don't underestimate, don't overestimate. So, but the, but the main thing is that you should understand that we're not putter 
from trying to understand these things. Because uh, as it brings down these uh, notes here, a lot of a lot of other things that that the Maral said on the subject of uh, Yedias Hashem and that Dveikas Hashem, that the mitzvah, the Dovka boy, is 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 uh, dependent on understanding Hashem's kofel and understanding what He put into the piece, that this is really. Uh, that he's revealed to us, as uh, much as is not revealed, he has revealed a great deal to us in terms of, of, uh, of you know, his own chachma and, and to the degree that he's put it into the Bria in a way that we can understand it, uh, we have an obligation to, to pursue that and try to figure out. And I would say, uh, to an extent, in Gashmis as well as in Rukhnis, because there's a tremendous, tremendous chachma in, in, in Gashmis as well. And it's, it's, it always amazes me um, the extent to which the uh, the world has become blinded to the to linking, you know, what used to be pushed. Every every non-Jew as well as Jew understood that when you see the brilliance, the genius behind the Bria, that there's got to be something behind that. You know, that there's a creator that's behind that. It was obvious to everyone, and in the last uh, of years or something, all of a sudden that's been brought into question, and this, this unbelievable illusion that happened by itself has taken hold of the world to such a degree that you know the large percentage of the world actually believes that, and it's inside of my my Lisa, who's, uh, it keeps up a little bit with more of the scientific things. She's talking about. You know, when you look at the, the unbelievable compl- complexity of a molecule of hemoglobin, you know, plus the blood, that it's it's like a thousand uh, atoms in the molecule, and each and, and, and it says that the capillaries can go so thin that they let through one molecule at a time, and and the, the and the veins that the science has not been able to to recreate veins and arteries because they have like 24 different layers and each one of them is doing something different and there's like muscles in there and it's just incredible how much impressive there is and, and if you just have any brain at all you have to understand that there's that there is no way to explain that you know through things happening themselves and even if there would be word to think that it happened over time as opposed to you know the result of a, a real all one time the mechanism that would be required to create that progress without, because what they don't understand or what they ignore is obviously that as things become more complex over time, if they're not done with an extremely well planned out, you know, plan of how, how, they, how it's going to develop, they just get worse and worse. And they start getting breaking down, and things get in the way of other things. And there's no way that they can work together as time progresses. It gets it doesn't get better; it gets worse. So when you're talking about a thing that involves chokhmah, it's not just some some simple result of, of, of what they want to present as, as uh, mutation and, and survival of the fittest, which is going to maybe maybe explains things on the simplest possible level, but not at the level what you're talking about the complexity that you have in, in, in any kind of living being. So let alone things like memory and all these things. So in other words, the more we learn about the Bria and the complexity of the Bria, the more, as long as we don't delude ourselves with, with illusions like that it could happen by itself, uh, and you look at it in any kind of animistic way, that there's a Chochmah behind it, that brings you close to Hashem, because you appreciate, you know, how, not only how brilliant Hashem is that he was, could create and design such a creation, but that he took the, the, the time to do it, that he put the, the invested into this, you know, for our sake, because he cares about us and because he wants us to be, uh, you know, to be in such a world. And you could have been gotten along with a lot less. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing. So anyway, so the more we appreciate Hashem on, on the uh, physical level, we ignore Hashem. The more we appreciate Hashem in terms of Ruchnius, also, we get closer to Hashem. Then we see Hashem in a whole different, from a whole different perspective. But it's all the chokhmah of Hashem what He put into the, the bria, and that's what we want to, uh, to discover. So, but at the same time, we have to have the humility to understand our limitations and to understand the brilliance of our chokhmim and how much, well, how big a gap there is between us. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that we should, you know, try to understand what He said. Okay. Um, the emes has zois loy kalah. It's not easy to appreciate, you know, who we are and to come to a, a realistic understanding of, what, of, of, of ourselves. Yeah, not too many people have really, have really delved into this 
and, and really understood it. Yes, yeah, so does Madrigas Atzma. Is the Madriga of our, ourselves? Where we're holding. The in Kalisa he mitzad etzam hasubazois, hasubazois. Kirak yiftach enoi yimsa hila atzmi. So in the one sense, it seems to be a very simple thing because who knows us better than ourselves? We just have to open our eyes and look at ourselves. And, you know, we're right there. <laughs> so we don't have to go somewhere, find somewhere, somewhere else. We're, we're talking about ourselves here. We're right here. There's nothing closer to us, to, to us than our, ourselves. The trouble is that most people approach this with, uh, with you know, kind of uh, replacing or, or reversing what actually is. We're turning it around. Because when he when he compares himself, and evaluates himself, compared to the Shoinim, to the you know to the earlier Chacham, he doesn't say exactly which which era, which which uh, uh, group he's talking about. There's, there's, there's a idea of that, that when he compares himself to the previous uh, generations, he says, "I also have a heart. I can also think. I can also you know I'm a, I'm a human being like them, right?" The Hayumim or Shoinim, Eimu Toivim Be'ela, and the old uh, days are not any better than today. We're all you know he tries to to. Uh, to uh, make himself uh, you know, on, on, a, on a similar level. <laughs> that the Chokhmah itself, that Hashem uh, planted into the creation, is, is all from one place. It all derives from one, from one uh, uh, Mekor, from one source. <laughs> because the human race is a human race. A human being is a human being. And this is the mistake that they make. That they assume that because we're all from the same source and we all, you know, and, and humanity is, is the way it always was, that they com compare themselves to the earlier doyers and that's where they get into trouble. The people are truly wise, understand who they really are. They don't. Uh, it's something to do with the uh, idea of um, taking a shoicha, that you, that you uh, let yourself be bought out, kind of. In the kol shekain the gifam. So they, so they, the zayin mikra erech atachomim. Chokhem is a person who doesn't allow himself to be dissuaded by various uh, personal uh, negias, you know, different things that, that uh, he wants to view himself in a certain light and therefore ignores the facts. Because you don't, you don't take that kind of a, a bribe. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this is the major, what, what the derech the, the ma'aral is, he'll take a particular ma'arachazal and he'll say the whole thing first and then he'll analyze the mamish piece by piece. So then he, goes, he goes through it one piece at a piece time. So this is his central uh, medrash here, this, this particular part. It's Omer Rabbi Yotanah. Liban shal vishoinim kepit shal ilam. That the, the heart of the, of the uh, first ones was like a was like a, uh, the opening of an ulam. An ulam is, uh, now he, he mentions, he talks about ulam and heichal, so he says that that's a reference to the Besamikdash. That there was the ulam, and then that led into the heichal, which was, uh, which was for, closer towards the, the, between the ulam and the Kodesh Kodushan. So, but it was a very large place, right? So that was, the ulam was very large. The Shalak Roy and the Gisvel Shal Heichal. And that was a very wide opening also. And the Achroinim, those that came after them, the next, uh, whatever, generation, the next, the next period, was Kepiskel Shahecha. That was, the, that was the size of a Hecha, which was actually small. And he says, And we are like a pinprick. Because compared to them, it's really so that the, the, the later ones were was a smaller opening than the first than the earlier ones, but ours is like a pinprick compared to theirs. So you can't get smaller than them. So Rishoinim, who's the Rishoinim? Rabbi Akiva. Achroinim, Rabbi Eliezer ben Shemir. Yikad Amri, Rishoinim, Rabbi Eliezer ben Shemir. Achroinim, Rabbi Yoshai ben Rivi. The uni kemuli na nekev machatz dukis. And here he's talking about himself. That uh, this is Rabbi Yochanan. 
who was like the, the greatest of the of the Amoyroim, saying that we're we're uh, mamish like the, like a pinker compared to this. Omar Abaya, so we're not talking about a small prison. We're talking about mamish, you know, the greatest person of his door. Omar Abaya, the Anan kesichta begidel legamra. So he says that so can, and, and compared to them. We're even smaller. Uh, this is Abaya, you know, is also one of the greatest of the Noi Ruin. Says that, that he says that the the um, the pair of is, is like a like a, a stake that's that's uh, stuck into the coisal, into a, a very narrow hole, and you have to like stip it in there with uh, you know with force. So that's the idea that whatever we learn is very difficult for us. As they used to be able to learn with great, you know, uh, great, it became easy. I mean, it was, it was it just flowed. With us, we have to really work at it. We have to, you know, really push ourselves to that anything should be able to penetrate. The Omruva the Anan it's Batu Bekira Lesvura. So that that so that he was talking about in Gemurah, It was very difficult for us to understand push it the the, the Gemurah. In Omar Rova, so there's a Rova Nabai with the, the famous pair that, uh, that used to uh, discuss matters together. And he says, and we are like, and, and, and we are like, so we're talking about the same door actually, we are also like a person who puts his, his uh, finger into a, into, a, um, into a wall for, in terms of svora. The svora is reasoning as opposed to, as you know, our own trying to reason things out as opposed to just making the cobble. Uh, what the Gemara says, so that's also like a very doesn't doesn't penetrate it doesn't or it, it, later on he explains what that what that means. The Omar Rav Ashi, the Anan ke atzbatu bebira leshikha, and and we are also and on the other hand we're like putting a finger into a huge uh, bore in terms of forgetting things. And it was it's very very easy for us to forget for to forget and it's very difficult for us to absorb. The word. So uh, we have you know. It's difficult on both sides. Harei heim hoidi v'loi boishi v'nath nishia l'rishayin and v'gam l'acharein and v'hoidi b'shalem and b'shalem. So they admitted they had no problem admitting where they were holding. That was not. They were not trying to put on any airs that they're high, holding on opposite high madrega. They, they were immediately admitted that they're where they're holding in, in, in reference to their previous uh, uh, generations. The atre a ich she shari hadoyres. So, you have, so now you have to look at, at how they described and how they they evaluated these these previous generations. That the Rishonim were like as if they were completely seichel. They were just like taken over by their intellect. They were just that was the, that was the the the, uh, the dominating force in their lives was the seichel. It was something that was just it was it was activated. It was like energized. It was it was there. If it does, we shine him. Geber koyach hasi guvar koyach hasichli ala gif. So here he's dividing up. He says, he says that, there, that you don't. It doesn't mean really the guf in terms of physical body. He means the 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 the, the life force of the guf. It was the physical life force of the person. So he's saying that that the. In the first generations, the koyach of the intellect was able to was able to, to totally dominate the physical forces of the earth. They didn't. They didn't. It wasn't. There was no competition. It was like it was so obvious to them what was the ikkar, what was the tofel, you know, what was the main thing that they put all of their koyachs into the, the intellect, and the goof was very secondary. Therefore, the 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 seichel was was you know had the upper hand. They didn't, it was not subordinate in any way. They didn't have to give in to the group. So when they were able to accomplish that, they were able to to be misgaber the koyach sifri on the koyach of the goof. It was their 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 heart, which is the you know the the heart in a sense is the the uh, uh, kind of the keli to be makabe was was widened was in was enlarged to such an extent became so wide. That it was able to 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 be able to receive the chacham, was able to, to get it. The loy hayulahem on me, I mean a gift, and the, and the goof was not standing in the way. Because when a person gets tired and they're falling asleep and they're you know and they're they're they're, they're, they're getting hungry and they're all the other things that get in the way of, of just being able to sit down with a gemora and just you know just shy away you know. So people allow the goof to to take over and it, it takes away from the of the of the, uh, the 
in a dama zeh le pesach rochav, and he and he and he, he, he compares that to an extremely wide opening, like a wide pesach. Asher pesach asiyah lekabel, because the idea of a wide, why would somebody want to make a wide opening? Because there's they want to increase the flow. They want to they want to make it so they want to make there's so much there to be lekabel <clears throat> that there has to be a, a pesach that's wide enough for it's like if you had a huge crowd of people trying to get into a uh, into a room. So you would want to have a wide enough door to, to let them through so they don't get crushed on the outside just trying to get through. Assuming there's room in the inside to be able to, to, to take them. But you don't want to, you know, you don't want to have it backed up to the extent, right? So you want to have it, you want to create a wide opening. She so says, she so says, he, um, the Oma Lebri Shainim, doing the Pisco Shal Elam. Ki Pisco Shal Elam Esrim because the, the Pesach of the Ulam was, was 20 amos, it's like 40 feet. It's a, it's a very, very large open. Pesach zeh, yoisa min harui le Pesach. So really you don't need usually such a big Pesach, right? But, so it's more, more than you need to have. Ki a Pesach ki asura, because a regular uh, Pesach is asura, even that's pretty big. Get a kind of one in an Eidu. So it's like the maximum Pesach for an Eidu is, 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 is 10 amos. The Arrocha may ask Amal, you know, you honestly know it. And it tells you you should, you should, uh, it's one interesting that today in Chabu, it's learning Tavka, this, this Mishnah, we're talking about this, in Eidu, about this, it's talking about the, 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 the sizes of the, uh, the Pesach. This is that if it's, if it's over 10, it's, you should, you should make it smaller. It's not supposed to be more than 10. Yosemi came near a Kapirza. Because if you know, it's too, it's bigger than that. It looks like a Pirza. It looks like it's, uh, it's only too big. Because like it's broken through or something. The Kasha Goiver has Seiko Ala Gif. As a Koya, Kasha Mekabal on his school is Doyma the Pesach Shin Pasir Yosemi Mashahi. It's an amazing thing. He's saying that, that when the, when the Seiko overpowers the goof to such an extent, then the force that is able to be the Kabal of the school is the, 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 these ideas or whatever, the, the information, the ideas, the, the, the Seiko, the whole thing, is, is compared to like a, a Pesach that's open more than is appropriate. You know? that's, it's, like, it's like more than necessary, more than, than, than you would ordinarily feel that that's a, that's, that's a, a normal shear. And it's sort of she heroi. So the, 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 the heroi, the appropriate size, is, uh, sorry, they made it 20, double that. So because they're taking it out from, from 10, so they, so they, they, they increased it to 20. Because that's twice 10, is, is, is 20, so it's like twice as big as you can fly. So now they, it only goes to the next generation. It's 9 o'clock now, you want to stop? It's 9 o'clock now, you want to stop? You want to go? I'm going, continue. So far, so good. Okay, so Achroinim, and he starts talking about the next generation, Peace Kishel Heichel, that they were already like the opening of Heichel, which is, which is 10. It's like a normal Pesach, the way it's supposed to be. Tain Yasuram. And it wasn't any less than that. It was mamas, you know, ten. So that's the way those generations were. They had the, that's the way the sechel was supposed to be. Whereas the first generation was like abnormal. It was like just more than normal people could handle. Like way out there. Then the 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 the, uh, the, 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 the he's talking about basically the uh, the uh, the later the later later uh, uh, saying that they were that they um, they had a sequel that was appropriate the way it was supposed to be. And to see it like Kabul, it's open to be from Kabul. The law here had goiver has sechel like it, but he says he didn't. It wasn't that the sechel was so much goiver on the kid. It wasn't that it was that it took guns, you know, the total domination. And totally overwhelming the book like the first generations. Rak, there was a balance between the intellect and the, and, 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 and the physical, whereby it had it was able to have a key. It was, it had, that was something that was sustainable. It was like a normal thing, the way we were created to be. That was the way it's supposed to be. You know, in other words, we can't expect ourselves to be on the level of, of what, what is it? it's like they say about the, the generation of, of uh, Jewish leaders that came up after the Holocaust. They say they would push it on a level that was not normal for our, you know, for, for that time in history. I mean, it was, it was a, a, how many years they were, you know, after, you know, after Baal Shem Tov or whatever. I mean, they, were, they were way, way above the normal level you would expect. 
And the reason I, is, yeah, they say, yeah, because yeah, it was yeah, just yeah, a yeah, gift yeah, from, yeah. from Hashem, because though the, that door needed to be built up from scratch. They, they had nothing, yeah, 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 and they had to be, uh, they, 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 they needed extraordinary people. And what those people did was extraordinary. They built up, they talk about, you know, Phoenix from the ashes. You know, I think they just built up from nothing. And they and within a, a relatively short time, you know, 20, 30 years or something, they built up Toyota learning to be on the level, you know, around the world. It's a soul sign in, in America, even in Europe, uh, on a level that it was never for who knows how long. You know, it's, it's, uh, Incredible, incredible accomplishment. But, uh, but we just, it, was a, it was a gift. So in the same sense, you could say that, that those first generations were unbelievably uh, endowed. You know, it was a gift from Hashem to have such people because, because that was the foundation of, of what we have from the fulfillment. The whole Torah Shabbat is, is founded on what they, what they uh, developed. So it was just uh, an incredible gift. So, but the other, the other were already, they were big, they were extremely big, but it was already more normal. Um, so, so, it was not, not more, not less, but that was really the balance. So what we what we compare the lave of the Rishonim to to be the like the, the opening of the Ulam, which is this this very large uh, opening. The the so it would seem to be the opposite, because here we're talking about the ulam is is a larger opening than the than the heichel. But on the other hand, the heichel has a mile of being a big higher in kedusha. Because the heichel was where the was where the the, the oran, uh, not the oran, where, where the uh, where the menoyer was, and the bei the it was it was right outside of the kodesh kedusha. So that was a much higher level of kedusha than the ulam. So you would think that if the if the Rishonim were on such a high level, we should compare them to the to the, the heichel, not to the really it's, it's precarious. So why why should that be? In came lama he ulam pisca esrin. Also, why should the ulam have this have this huge opening of esrin and the heichel only a asura? So this is not a kasha. Higam be heichel the ulam hika. Oh, he's saying that, that in, in the in the in the Besamikdash it was also like that. <laughs> it shouldn't be um, shouldn't be be surprised. Mojimani, it's leudam. So it's like that, like with the person himself. Kasher he kiloi seichel yoyma she she seichloi ruchav harbe. So when you go in a prison, is is all seichel. So you say he's got a very very wide seichel. Kacha yibayilam. So that's what was in the ruchav. It's very very wide. Because the, the, the Kedusha of the Ulam is not as high as the Kedusha of the Hechim. The Hechim is even on a higher level. The Hechim by a Pesach of Ulam Yosem Me'asura. So the, 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 the opening of the Ulam was, was greater than the Hechim. The Kedusha of the Ulam is not as high as the Kedusha of the Ulam. That the kedusha in the world is actually found in this in this width. But the but the pesach of the of the heichel was like it's supposed to be normally. So it was, it was uh, a ten am. Because the kedusha of the heichel was even on a higher level of kedusha. The kedusha is always nimsa ba'oyel on the pihan hui. So in other words, the idea of 20 is already like the El, el Yoinim. So that's for the El Yoinim, that's what's, what you have to have. But for in terms of the Kedusha in this world, the way it is on this world, it's supposed to be 10. Because 10 is, is because we're talking about bringing the Kedusha down into this world. So for the, for the, for the Bezim Mikdash, the, 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 the opening of 10 for the Heichel was more, was more appropriate. Because it was on a higher level Kedusha. The law here, Goyer HaKedusha, or Yoyna HaZois, the Pirsa Yaseidah. This whole thing, the whole thing in the, the, the Maharal is balance. It's very into, you know, geometrical things, and how things work out geometrical, and things are planned out and designed in a way that's supposed to be balanced and, and normal. He says, you have to be the and the don't go extreme this way or that way. It's very much against extremes. There's always, you know, be, be able to talk to people and be able to be, you know, good with people, and you don't have to go to this, 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 you know, so too much one way or the other. So he says, for the level, apparently what he's saying is for the level of the him, the level that they were on and that they had to be on for the function that they had to do, that their intellect was so, so high they needed that kind of, they needed that kind of, a, of, a, of a intellect.
intellect to be able to found what they were doing. But for the normal kiyom that you're supposed to have in this world, which is actually on a higher level condition because it's it's made for this world, so that's supposed to be the normal amount, and not so much more. You can use nimsa oil in the field rui me mashia nimsa b'taktoy and mashia himbali gif. So when you have a physical world, that's what it's supposed to be. Ten is the right amount. It wasn't like a like it's blasting through something. It was it's it's measured. It's properly measured. So it doesn't get out of control and it's not overbalancing, it's not top heavy. It's like, you know, it's like we talk about in, in, in Pekiovis about Hakmosoi, Kiriki, Yerusoi, you know, if they be Hakmosoi, Nuriba, Yerusoi, or Yerus, Yerusoi, 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 if it's not balanced between Hakmosoi and Yer and all these things, it just falls over. It doesn't, it, it can't uh, retain the, the, um, the, uh, uh, the, 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 what's the word? The, um, what's the word? Fall. No, to, to uh, have a perpetuity. I mean, it's like, like a, it's, it's a continuity. Continuity. Um, the im kain, Gedisha sa ilam, she Gedisha lamata, hoya nimsa beroichad yoiser, the hoya ha pesach esrim amu, kilo oilam. So when you, when, you, when you really get deeper into this, you see that the, that the, that the lave of, of, of people that are macabre, this this seichel uh, nimto, this this, uh, this uh, uh, removed, the seichel that's, that's so far removed from, from this world, the kabbalah is a kedisha el kisa, and that's the holiness of 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 from Hashem. He dover echad the tachlis, and she'ein hefish klal b'neihem. He's saying the kedusha and the seichel are one thing, basically. But when we're talking about a, a, a seichel or a kis, we're talking about an intellect that's based on on, on godliness. That's one with kedusha. So I'm saying that. Go, go deeper into the next one. That wasn't too overwhelming. First, I see the Maharal has his own style of Hebrew and yeah, his own style that I can see. Okay. Secondly, he wrote this in, am I right, in the 1550s? Around 15? Uh, yeah, he was about the same time as the Rizal. If he says about himself, about an Anu Kamale Nekev Mechat Stakis, we are like pinprick. I am so depressed. Does Rabbi Yochanan said that? Rabbi Yochanan, <laughs> I am so depressed because I want this intellectual enlightenment. I want this now. I can't take it. <laughs> we are so. <laughs> you, if, if, if Rabbi Yochanan wasn't depressed, you don't have to be depressed. <laughs>